the local <coughs> and material <coughs> derivative of an integer. That's important too. Okay, so let's consider a property. Again, let's call it A. And now, instead of talking about the specific contents of the property, we can talk about the density of the property. So the density of the property, what is it? Is the contents of the property per unit of? Per unit of? Volume. volume. If, so if I talk about the specific contents of a property and the density of a property, they are related by mu equal rho phi. Because phi is the contents per unit of mass. Rho is the mass per unit of volume, so the product will be the contents per unit of volume. So they are related to each other. But just for convenience, now I will obtain, I will talk about the density of the property and not about the specific contents of the property. But just by replacing mu times rho phi, I can recover the specific contents. Okay. So now I'm thinking of a volume in space. Volume B. And mu is the contents of the property per unit of volume. If I just multiply mi, mu times differential of B, I would obtain the contents of this property in a differential of B. If I sum for all the differentials of B in the, in the, in the, in the domain, so I do a volume integral, I will obtain the contents of this property in the volume. Okay? In the volume. By the way, if this property depends on time, this time also goes out from here. So depending on time, if this changes of time, that contents of this will depend on time. So finally, in general, the amount of a certain property in a volume depends on time. Do you agree with me? Depends on time. So if it depends on time, it has mathematical and physical sense the derivative of this contents with respect to time. So that's indicated by Q prime. Q prime is the derivative of Q with respect to time. So how would that be mathematically? Well, we have to compute that Q at time t plus delta t minus that Q at times t divided by delta t and take the limit when delta time t is zero. That's the definition of a, a, a derivative, right? So the time derivative of a volume contents of a property is has sense. But now we can go deeper to the problem and we can also consider two situations. First, that volume in which I, consi I, con I consider the contents is fixed in space. By the way, if we talk about a volume that is fixed in space, technically in continuum mechanics, we talk about a control volume, okay? So we are talking now about the control volume. But anyway, this doesn't change essentially the fact that in a control volume, there are properties. I don't know, I, at this point, I don't just um, consider or just focus on uh, what is the reason for having variations of this property inside. It can be due to many reasons. I don't enter into this point. So the fact is that in this fixed volume, at times t, there is an amount of property, which is q of t, which can be computed by that. And at times t plus delta t, the contents, just since that depends on t, at times t plus delta t, the contents will be that one. Okay? So if now I want to compute the derivative with respect to time of these contents, since the volume is local, is fixed in a space, we'll give the, the, the result the name of the local derivative of the integral. <coughs> local because it's a fixed space. How do we compute that? We'll denote that, look, the same that we, told, we did it when we talk about local derivative of properties. You remember that we talk material and local derivative of properties, you remember? And the material derivative is the local derivative plus the convective derivative, okay? So in fact, I advance that we'll try to obtain a similar relation in that case. So the derivative, the local derivative of this integral will be denoted by this partial with respect to t, okay? And that means <coughs> that b is considered a long time a fixed surface. So how do I compute this derivative? Well, is the integral of b of mu at t plus delta t integrated minus the contents at t, which is the integral of the same on the same volume, because at t and t plus delta t 
the volume remains constant, important, important, minus mu of xt. And you know that the integral over the same domain of two different kernels, then you can introduce uh, under a common kernel. So finally, it can be introduced as the integral of mu of t plus delta, at t plus delta t minus mu at t divided by delta t and take the limit. But look, the limit of the integral is the integral of the limit. So finally, let's concentrate on this part. What is that mathematically? So a function that depends on, on an argument x, which is fixed, uh, which is kept fixed, and an argument t, which is incremented, subtracted and divided by time, time and taken to the limit. What is that? The partial derivative of mu with respect to t. Kappa is constant. So that's the partial. That, in, in continuum mechanics, how do we call that? Local derivative. So finally, we obtain this expression. If I want to obtain the local derivative of the integral, it's equal to the integral of the local derivatives of the property, of the volume content of the density of the properties. OK? So to take a local derivative of the integral, the only thing we have to do is just differentiate with respect to t, take the local derivative of the kernel of the integral. OK? So far, so good. But we could also talk about the derivative with respect to time in other conditions, which is that one. Imagine that now the volume that I consider, which we consider a material volume. So this is the same pack of particles. You, repen, you remember the material volumes is something, a set of particles, that are the same particles all along time, but they change the positions of time. In particular, at time t, they occupy a position bt. And that's the one that I'm referring to when I see I want to compute the derivative of these contents at time t when the vo material volume occupies position b occupies the domain in the space field. So OK, the, the, the contents in all cases can be calculated as the integral <coughs> of on b of mu xt. But what is the contents at time t plus delta t? The contain at time t plus delta t would be the integral of mu, but at the domain b t plus delta t. And what would be the contains the contain at time t? The integral, but the volume bt. Okay, so the difference of this contains divided by delta t, as specified at that t, where the both volumes tends to the same b, that is what we call the material derivative of the integral. So the material derivative of the integral is something that refers to a material volume that moves that at certain time occupies a certain volume B. And I want to see what is the change of contents of this property, not in the space in that, but in the material volume. So I will say what is the rate, the change per unit of time, of the contents of the property, not in the local volume fixed in the space, but in the material volume that moves over the space. Of course, at this time t, that volume occupies a place. Okay? So it's like when I take a derivative and I specify the derivative in a certain point. Here I'll take the derivative. The derivative depends on time through two, two reasons. First, depends on time because the, 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 the kernel depends on time. But also depends on time because the integrand, the domain of integration, depends on time. OK? So now, when I look at this derivative, look, this integral is not the same of that. So I cannot group them in principle until I cannot just do that is the integral on b of this minus this. That's not true. That's not true. So I have to do something else. And this is some, math some mathematics. What we do is a change of variable. So to speak, we refer these two integrals at the reference configuration. We, we just refer this integral at the reference configuration. Refer, sorry, refer this integral at the reference configuration. Refer this integral at the reference configuration. And when we have the reference configuration, both volumes are the same. And then we can just put both terms inside. Okay? So I could have sources, 
sources of properties. For instance, I can have a chemical reaction which is, uh, produces heat. So even if I don't move, if I don't just, there is a source of the property heat, for instance, in cement, in our concrete, the, 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 the concrete, the, just due to, to, the, to the hardening of concrete, then produces heat. And that heat is the property can just intrinsically in uh, uh, increase due to heat of the, to sources of the property, and so that means that this can even vary, okay? So, I, but I, I, at this time, I don't <coughs> care, I don't care about what are the reasons for increasing the quantity. The only point is that unlike the previous case, now I'm measuring that in a volume that changes in time. And then I want to compute that integral. In that case, that is called the material derivative because I'm following the material. It's something that has something to do with the concept of local derivative when I'm looking at a point and material derivative when I'm following a particle. Do you remember that? And we see that they are not the same. Here, when I talk about the local derivative, I'm looking at a fixed, po a fixed volume of space. And when I'm talking about the material derivative, I'm thinking of a material volume, a volume which is always made of the same particles, but that changes, occupies different volumes a long time. So finally, by some mathematics, we obtain that this material derivative can be obtained nicely in that way. So first, the material derivative, which stands for, again, the change of the contents of a property in a volume, which is a material volume per unit of time, is equal to this. This is the, what we saw before, the local derivative. The change of the contents of the property in the volume that we are considering, but assuming that this volume is fixed. But then there is an additional term that comes from the fact that the integral depends on time. And this so simple as that. The integral of the volume of the divergence, look, this is a vector, dot, nabla dot, we call that divergence, okay? Divergence of mu, mu is the density of the property times the velocity. And this is what we call the convective derivative of the time derivative of the integral. So this just is an extension of what we visited already when we talk about point-wise local uh, material derivatives, which were equal, you remember, the local derivative plus the convective derivative. And the convective derivative was uh, something related to convection. So if there is no convection, if there is no motion, if there is no motion, the convective derivative is zero and the local and material derivatives were the same. You remember that? Here is the same. What about if velocity is zero everywhere? Or if we, if we want, it's constant everywhere. Uh, let's call zero, zero, okay? Zero everywhere. How much is the divergence of the velocity? Zero. So how much is the convective derivative? Zero, okay? So if there is no velocity, if there is no motion, if the body is fixed, then the material derivative and the local derivative are the same. Of course, because if that body is fixed, then th there is no sense, or, or the, 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 the volume t plus delta t, the domain occupied by the, by the material body at t plus delta t is the same than before. So nothing changes, okay? But in general, this is not the case. In general, there is velocity, and then the, 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 this term here is different from zero. And then, we can talk about the material derivative, which is the change of the content of a certain content of something in a pack of particles in our volume, of in, a, in our mm, material domain. So what is the contents of water in this material domain? Well, I mean, I can talk about the contents in this space, and in this space, changing when the, 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 the battle moves, or the contents in this battle as it moves, but at, uh, evaluated the, the, content, the, the change of contents period of time when the battle occupies this position. They are different concepts. They have different results. So the material derivative is equal to the local derivative plus this term, 
which is the convective derivative. By the way, we can also introduce that. You remember that as talking about local derivatives, we can just enter the integral in here, right? And so the, the local derivative of the integral is the integral of the local derivatives. So this goes in, and then these two terms can be grouped, and then we can see that this is finally expressed as the material derivative plus the convective derivative at point-wise. So finally, these are all expressions which are equivalent. Local derivative plus convective, or the integral of the local derivative plus the divergence of mu or the integral of the material derivative of the de density, density of the property, plus mu gradient of p. Please recall that expression, because we are going to use that in short. 